I'm going to open up with a picture of a heart, a cross of five hearts on that cross that represents Christ's five sacred wounds. I had a vision of this painting and it's far from being complete. It deals with the theme of living water. It's undergone a number of transitions already and it will probably go through more before I'm satisfied with it. I want to uh, share with you a letter I mailed to some of my friends about this work and, and other things that were on my mind. Uh, I work with people who are ill at times. I uh, do prayer painting. This is a prayer painting behind me for the welfare of some ladies who have cancer. Sandra, Sandy, and more people know her. And two Lisas, and Kathy, and I can't remember all of the names. Uh, I correspond with a, a nun who been my friend for over 40 some odd years, a uh, medical missionary of Mary, uh, I call her my little sister. Dear little sister and friends, I seem to have an artist's eye for the beauty I find in the world and also in my church. I'm also aware of the problems and address them at times for the purpose of limiting them in the future. There are those who perpetuate the problems by regarding the addressing of them as derogatory toward the church, and those who do our enemies for the wrong. At Mass today, I saw the image again, I refer to it as Christ, and do believe it is, and you will see it too, if you look. I'm not content to just experience them, in reference to that I try to explain how they can occur naturally. The beauty that existed in them is in my discernment and the unique experience of seeing them for the first time and how they may relate to what I am working on. One can see something a thousand times but never really experience seeing it. The revelations that can move you positively in your love of God. The time of the image was when Father Paul held up the host and chalice with wine beneath it. This was done in the direct flow of light and somehow the reflected surface of the wine projected an image of what I perceived as the upper torso and head, the reminiscence of many images of Christ you see in art throughout the churches. I don't think of it as a miraculous happening, but I do find it inspirational in keeping my deep belief in the truth of God's presence in the Eucharist. A while ago I gave out folders. I found a lot of these cards in a lying in the closet doing no good at all. It had to do with a Eucharistic miracle. There was a priest who kind of doubted well, when he held up the host and wine and it became the body and blood of Christ. Well, when he did that, it changed. Centuries later, they did DNA testing on the tissues that you see in this monstrance here. In the upper one, there was heart fiber tissues. Then beneath that, there were droplets of blood, and they had the same DNA structure as the heart above. And that happened in Luciano, Italy. And so, right after I got done uh, giving them out, I go to the 8 o'clock Mass and say the rosary afterward, and, and on Fridays we have adoration. And that Friday, I saw the initials JC, and, and, and I thought it was really neat. I had a lady sit in my seat, and it had to be just sitting in the right place. And she said, gee, that's neat, George. We should tell the pastor. Well, the pastor, Paul, was over in Ireland at the time. He said, if you tell somebody, they'll just move the monstrance anyway. Well, the next week, they changed the monstrance. But there's still images there. And um, I enjoy exploring them.
I did a video caption the JC for the first time after giving everybody I could the pictures of the miracle of Lucanio, Italy. I regard these as a visual affirmation of what I was doing as pleasing to God. While exploring the first video of Christ's initials, I noted a mini minute image on the monster support. And sometimes when you looked at it really close, I like to kind of remind me of uh, Mary, which I'm very much into and the rosary and so forth. And the, uh, so I saw images on a new one, which were, I just, I did a video of that also, and, and, and what I'll do, I'll take stop pictures and then photograph the video and when it stops, and kind of the images change. And the, uh, and I did that after most of the people left adoration and down very few stayed for the whole two hours, maybe three of us or four on occasion. And uh, then I'll, I'll, I will project them on a 55 inch TV so I can see them more clearly and larger. And somewhat like the shadow of a cross that appeared on my painting for Susie's new lungs when I went down to record a spiritual song, his first line was, a shadow of a cross. I was working on a very large painting on a easel. When I went down to record that song, there was a shadow of a cross on it. I've been in this studio painting for years, I've never seen that before. And the, uh, the young lady, I, I consider it a positive affirmation. The young lady did receive her double lung transplant. And, and uh, I started the painting in October. She had the transplant in May. And just last week, and you know, we're in uh, September now, uh, she had a video up on her Facebook page where she's skydiving for a plane in Australia. So she's doing reasonably well. Now, the Friday before last, I had a vision of a prayer painting that I should do at Adoration. Like, a great number of you who pray, do so in a form of where you take the time to talk to God, and He listens to you. And if you listen, you'll get what I think in terms of like a mind message. You will hear Him speak to you. It's not anything, you know, terribly mystical. Most people who pray do this. The people who don't, or they just do prayers by rote, they don't have a clue about what that is. But the, uh, it's a wonderful uh, personal communication that you can conduct with God through prayers, saints or whoever, Mary or what have you. The, uh, and the, uh, this is just a rough start of it. And uh, when I did it, I wanted it to be a prayer painter for the ladies of cancer, and I've got five of them that I have on my list, so to speak, that I'm more involved with. And the, uh, one of them had an operation yesterday, and that letter has to do with this. And she wanted to study with me, or, or have a lesson. She wanted me to show her how to paint Mary, but uh, last Sunday I said, you know, I'm gonna start a painting. If you'd like, I'll be happy to have you over. Now she was in a bit of a weakened state. Her son and daughter brought her over and kind of helped set her up a little bit. She uh, reclined on a sofa and she watched the, uh, the start of this piece. It has already undergone a number of changes and when I do paint it like this, I don't do them to finish it. If I want to, I will totally change it. It's offering up the act of creativity as a prayer. Well, anyway, back, I had, you know, I have been totally involved with my spiritual life. X number of years ago, a few years ago, I was very ill, I thought I was gonna die, and when that happened, you know, they said no atheists in foxholes. I was always a spiritual person, got to be more that way. And I love that space, and I practice discipline by going to daily Mass and Communion. I'll watch programs on television dealing with theology and that. I love the uh, International Rosary and I travel throughout the world. And I really love Mary and the Rosary as a prayer for peace in the world. And the, uh, so 
last month I actually had a borrowing $500.